vindication. I'm glad you're here today. Prophet without honor, eh? Well, at least I'm still alive to see this. Yeah, they'll break their necks to get you back and raise your rank when they see what this will do. 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, fire! aeronautically. No, it was the motor. But why? Why, after four years of development tests? It seems impossible, but I can figure only one thing. What? Somebody tampered. Sabotage. Well, that's for intelligence to find out, and we built another. I'm afraid you won't, Charles. Well, of course we will. Do you think this failure is going to make it easier to get new appropriations? Things like this mean military cuts, boy. Research is going back to the laboratories. Well, then I will, too. I'm not quitting. First, I want to reintroduce myself to my wife and kids. Mow lawns, fix leaky faucets, paint fences, and read a few detective stories in the bathtub. Then get on with the problem and a few others I've had to neglect these last few years. A satellite to circle the Earth forever, 12,000 miles above sea level. What did I call it a while back, just before it was fired? Your vindication, General? I'm sorry. I'm sorrier about that than anything else. After your years of crusading, all I've succeeded in giving you is the most expensive pile of junk in history. your ears. How was the trip, General? Very smooth. I flew in on one of your Skyliners. Nice ship, Jimmy. Very nice. Uh-oh. Whenever you start with a compliment, you're after something. That's hardly civil, Jim. I haven't seen you for the better part of two years. Did I ask you for something the last time I saw you? Mm, you certainly did. You wanted a shoulder to cry on because Cargrave's rocket fizzled. Glad to see you anyway, General. I'm not wasting my time crying about that anymore. After the way you sold me. Quote, the rocket is an absolute necessity. If any other power gets one out into space before we do, we'll no longer be the United States, we'll be the disunited world, etc., etc., unquote. That's twice as true today. Look, you proved that a satellite rocket isn't practical. It blew up, didn't it? Did it blow up, Jimmy? Or was it blown up? Blown up? Well, why ask me? Army intelligence might know. They know. What's your pitch, General? I'll tell you. Wait a minute. I think I can put this together myself. You're a satellite rocket man. You crusaded yourself right out of the service. Then you kept on crusading. Finally, they took up the Cargraves project. It fizzled. Now, following the course of old established habit, you'd like to drop it in my lap. 
Well, I love you, General. But I'm just a plain manufacturer, not the Department of Defense. The answer's no. Then, oh, no. Don't like that cigar, we're going to lunch. Who said you were anything but a manufacturer? That's why I came to you. Look, General, building rocket satellites is big stuff. I couldn't begin to finance one I'm of those. I'm not asking you to rebuild the satellite. Cargrave spent four years on that project. That rocket could have and should have done everything we anticipated. There's no time nor need to repeat that experiment. And what in blazes are you driving at now? The moon. Okay. I listen. Tell me. I did tell you. The next rocket we build is going to the moon. Let's go to lunch. I'm serious, Jim. No, you can't be. It's too fantastic. The moon? <laughs> Impossible. Even with an atomic energy engine, exhaust velocity potential of 30,000 feet a second, what? thrust of 3 million pounds. Why, even Jess Spewley's atomic engine has only limited use. He hasn't come close to designing a mobile unit. Cargraves has spent the past two years on it. He's not only designed it, he's tested it. His scale model ran for an hour and 23 minutes before it blew up. It's incredible. I saw it, Jim. Good grief, man, and the government hasn't taken that over? It's peacetime, Jim. The government isn't making that kind of appropriations. Well, they'll need the rocket one of these days, and if it's not ready, the government will do the job. And they'll turn to you, to private industry, to do it. Government always does that when it gets in a jam. It has to. This time, I figured we might be ready for the government. Preparedness isn't all military, Jim. What about the money? That's not the problem. It's production. That's why I came to you. You're a production man. The problem right now is one of research, designing, special materials, the pooling of resources, specialized skills, engineering brains, industrial capacity. No single company could possibly do it. But combined American industry, sparked by Jim Barnes, could put a rocket on the moon within a year. Huh? What do you say, Jim? Do we go to lunch? Or do we go to the moon? The moon, huh? Here's the control room. All this space below carries the working fluid, the reaction mass. It's water heated to dry steam by the atomic pile and expelled through this jet. Here we have the shielding to protect the crew from radioactivity. Here are the gyros behind the water tanks, and they can be used to turn the ship to any desired attitude. I admit, gentlemen, this enterprise appeals to me. I've always been attracted by, uh, shall I say, progressive forms of transportation. I've not been noted as a horse and buggy man. <laughs> Now, I'd rather like to have a finger in this new go-devil, though nothing in the world would tempt me to ride in it. But can we afford it? Well, I've been told you can, Mr. Laporte. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind? <laughs> now, listen, fella, I've known you from way back. Two engine planes weren't fast enough. You had to go in for four. Then props weren't fast enough. You had to go in for jets. Now you've got a hold of something else, something that'll go higher and faster than anything that ever existed before. You can't swing it alone, so you're trying to rope us in on well, before we go along with you, you'll have to tell us. What's the payoff? Dollars and cents? I don't know. I want to do this job because it's never been done. Because I don't know. It's research. It's pioneering. What's the moon? Another North Pole, another South Pole. Our only satellite, our nearest neighbor in the sky. But why go there, Jim? Well, no, when we get there, we'll tell you when we get back. It's a venture I don't want to be left out of. I like your viewpoint, Jim. But there are a good many men here who won't see it. They don't even understand it. I've got a first reader lesson all drawn up for him. Sit down, will you, fellows? Ask the others to take seats. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? If you'll all be seated, I'd like to show you a motion picture we had prepared for this meeting. We have one of Hollywood's best-known actors to play for you. All right, Sam. magazine doesn't think so. Nor look, nor pick, nor colliers, nor your biggest daily newspapers. <laughs> It'll 
You'll never get off the ground. Hmm. No propellers. Rockets do not employ propellers. They use jets. So do gas stoves. But they don't fly to the moon. <laughs> Obviously, you know nothing about rockets. Now, let's pretend that umbrella of yours is a shotgun. Shoot it. Who pushed me? The gun would it. The charge not only fired out of the muzzle, it kicked back with equal force against the barrel. Ah, oh, it wouldn't happen again in a hundred times. Shoot it at the ground a few times in rapid succession and see what happens. That same principle applies to rockets. It is the same shotgun kick of the explosives that throws the rocket forward. That kick, incidentally, is quite independent of the air around the rocket. It works just as well in a vacuum or in outer space, which is a vacuum. The moon is a great deal easier to reach than you realize. Oh, sure, it's a cinch. Only 240,000 miles. Paved highway all the way and a gas station at every intersection. Fuel is no problem, Woody. The engines do not have to blast all the time. Just long enough to get you away from the gravitational pull of the Earth. Following which, you fall wherever you're headed for. Get in and I'll demonstrate. start, the jets blast powerfully enough to counteract the gravitational pull of the Earth. Once out of the Earth's atmosphere, the rocket just keeps on going, encountering no resistance to slow it up. The rocket does not appear to be traveling, but the high speed, or escape velocity as we call it, is about seven miles a second. It keeps falling in outer space in the direction in which it was started. Now, as it nears the moon, that planet's gravitational field begins to pull it toward it. Can't hear you, Woody. No air, remember. Turn on your aerial. Hey, no brakes on this thing. I'm gonna crash. How do I land? Very simple. Just reverse the takeoff. Yeah, but what about the wings? Can't use them. The moon has no air. Now he tells me. <laughs> Turn the ship around. Use the shotgun kick of the exhaust to break the speed and set her gently on her tail. So we made it. But how do we get home from this piece of cheese? Shooting a rocket from the moon to the Earth is a great deal easier than shooting from the Earth to the moon because it's downhill almost all the way. The V-2 rocket could do it today. On the return trip, we use the wings to glide in and for economy's sake, finish the landing like this. Sensational. I'm sold. I'll back it to the hill. Here's my two bucks. Well, when do we start building? Well, gentlemen, when do we start building? You've examined our model, you've seen our little picture. I hope by now we've succeeded in dispelling some of your original skepticism. Mr. Barnes, can you imagine me going before a meeting of my stockholders and reporting that I'd put millions into a trip to the moon? Why, son, they'd lynch me. <laughs> I doubt it even in Texas, when you tell them why. It just happens we have no choice. If we want to stay in business, we have to build this ship. Did you say have to build it, Jim? That's what I said. If it's that important a project, why doesn't the government undertake it? Now, here's the reason. The vast amount of brains, talents, special skills, and research facilities necessary for this project are not in the government. Nor can they be mobilized by the government in peacetime without fatal delay. Only American industry can do this job. And American industry must get to work now, just as we did in the last war. Yes, but the government footed the bills. And they'll foot this bill, too, if we're successful. You know that. If we fail, we'll take a colossal beating. So we can't fail. 
Not only is this the greatest adventure awaiting mankind, but it's the greatest challenge ever hurled at American industry. And General Thayer is going to tell you why. The reason is quite simple. We are not the only ones who know that the moon can be reached. We are not the only ones who are planning to go there. The race is on, and we'd better win it, because there is absolutely no way to stop an attack from outer space. The first country that can use the moon for the launching of missiles will control the Earth. That, gentlemen, is the most important military fact of this century. see no need for further discussion. It's our job. Well, all I got to say is we'd better build it in Texas. It's the only state big enough to hold it. <laughs> if you can increase the initial velocity only six hundredths of a mile per second, can make the trip in two days instead of four. We'll have to compute what that means in reaction mass. Too heavy. This is a case where pounds of ship cost many pounds of reaction mass. Try titanium. That's exactly right as far as appearance goes. All that remains now is to test it. Well, it goes for a stratosphere chamber test this afternoon. I've added one detail, Charles. What in thunder is that for? The chafing suits we wear over our pressure suits I've had made up in colors. Why? For identification. We use these four colors for the four crew members, and then nobody can get lost from the others. The moonscape's pretty drab, you've told me. Well, these bright colors will give us high visibility. Maybe you're right if nobody minds looking a little bit like a carnival balloon. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, General, I tried to get you before you left Washington. Look worried. Is anything wrong? Hey, it's not the engine, is it? Have you tested it? Not yet. Doesn't look like we're going to. Listen to this. I am directed to inform you that your petition to test an atomic energy reaction engine at the scene of the construction of your rocket ship is regretfully denied. Denied? It is the opinion of the Commission that a possible danger exists should the engine fail structurally. 
in the resultant dispersal of radioactive materials around the neighborhood of the test area. Now, oh, we've told them a dozen times we've cleared the area out for 10 miles around. While it is admitted that no real danger of atomic explosion exists, a belief in such danger does exist in the public mind. It is the policy of the commission... Policy, my foot! Somebody's throwing a monkey wrench. Oh, wait, there's more. The test is authorized at the Special Weapons Testing Center in the South Pacific. South Pacific? Well, that's doggone nice of them. What's the matter with the North Pole or, or Little America? What's a few months' delay one way or the other? They're merely trying to protect their own necks. You can't buck public opinion. I've tried. Have you seen this? That isn't public opinion. It's a job of propaganda. You're almighty right it is. Manufactured and organized with money and brains. Somebody's out to get us. Stops us in our tracks, anyway. We'll have to reschedule. With what? What do you mean? What are we going to use for money? We've pushed our resources to the limits. Every day a delay costs. Say, Doc. The ship's about ready to take off, isn't she? Except for tests and minor adjustments. What's the next favorable time? About a month from now. No, I don't mean that. What's the next favorable time this month? The only favorable time this month is about 17 hours from now. All right, that's it then. We take off in 17 hours. Are you out of your mind? I will be if we run into any more red tape. Now look, there's no law against taking off a spaceship. It's never been done, so they haven't gotten around to prohibiting it. If we ask for permission, they'll find a way to block us. So we go now, as soon as we can. In an untested ship? How do you test a thing of this kind? It either works or it doesn't. It's a one-time deal. Doc, have you any worries about the engine? Well, none, but we haven't trained a crew. So we don't. The takeoff is fully automatic. The general and I will run the ship. You'll be the engineer. Brown has known from the beginning that he'll handle the radio and radar. What about ballistics? Oh, that's where we're stuck. The takeoff wasn't planned for this month. It's a week's work. You think Dr. Hastings is pretty good, don't you? The best in the world. Give him the job. A pot of black coffee and all the assistance he can use. You all set, General? All set. Great, then it's settled. We'll all be heroes or angels, so what can we lose? We'll take off tomorrow morning, before dawn. We've got a lot to do in 17 hours. Get me my home. I'd like to talk to Mrs. Cargraves. All roads have been blocked. Because of the danger of radioactivity, the area is being cleared of spectators. Do not attempt to approach the site of the spaceship. The public is asked to stay away. I shall repeat this warning. Do not attempt to approach the site of the spaceship. Four, five, two point six. Uh, two, two point seven eight. A correction, 22.79. Yes? Mr. Brown still cannot be located, Mr. Barnes. Well, check with the main gate, the store, everywhere. Keep calling me back. What's the last one? 32.1. Check. 219.9. Check. Uh, 2.7. Yes? Mr. Sweeney is here to see General Thayer. Uh, send him in. Uh, 404.5. Uh, uh, 214.9. What's up, Joe? It's Brown, sir. They've taken him to the hospital. The hospital? Is he all right? He will be after they cut out his appendix. Oh, no. Well, what do we do? Hey, Joe. Joe! You can handle the ship's radio and radar equipment, can't you? Yeah. You know as much about it as Brown. Will you take his place? To the moon? Yes. What's the moon got that this desert ain't? Besides... Besides what, Joe? Well, I got a date with a nice little chick tomorrow. No thanks. Joe! Unless you come along with us, we're sunk. You're the only man left who knows how to handle the equipment. Mr. Barnes, mind if I sound off a little. What do you mean? 
You're pretty smart men. You and Dr. Cargraves and the general. I don't set myself up to know as much as you do, but, well... What's on your mind? You're all wet. In what way? The thing won't work. It can't. It's crazy. Figure all that weight. It won't budge an inch. And what do I see him putting in the fuel tanks? Water. You're all gonna look like a bunch of dummies. If you'd believe that, you'd come along. Yeah, but I don't want to look like a dummy. You wouldn't. We're entirely responsible for the whole thing. You don't think it could blow up? We'd never get in it if we thought that. Joe, you have confidence in Dr. Cargraves, me, the general. We wouldn't ask you to do anything we didn't believe in. Would you like to go? Okay. I'll sit up there with you and twiddle the knobs just for laughs. Fine, Joe. It'll never budge. Be sure you twiddle the right knobs. Okay, then. Hey, you guys are really serious, ain't you? Dead serious. Hey, wait a minute. I've got to get through. Sorry, nobody passes here. But I tell you, you have to take me through. I've got a court order here forbidding them to take off. I'm sorry you couldn't bring the boys, Emily. I couldn't, darling. You gave me so little time. You're all right. Like to go in my place, Mrs. Cargraves? Who, me? Oh, do you know? Don't worry, ma'am. We won't get very far. Coming, Doc? In a moment. It's about time, Charles. Goodbye, Mrs. Cargraves. We'll take good care of your husband, Mrs. Cargraves. Try not to worry. Mr. Barnes, there's a joker back there trying to crash the gate. He has a car on that says you can't take off. Darling. Hastings, I wish you had room for me in the ship. You've got to stay here and see we get back home. Goodbye. Good luck. All right, take it away! Barnes! Cargraves! Stop! Come back here! Can't hear a word you say. Jim, you're the skipper. Take over. First time I ever outranked the full general. First time I've heard you admit you were ever outranked by anybody. Hey, am I the only one that's scared? This thing might wake. We're all scared, but it won't. All right, gentlemen, take off stations. Ship is Luna. L U N A. Luna. Over. Luna. Roger. Tell them to clear for firing. Clear firing area in preparation for departure. Over. Roger. Whoop. 
Padre, Spaceship Luna. Calling Drywell's airfield. Over. Drywell to Luna. Over. I'm making preparations for firing. Over. Drywell's is ready for tracking. Over. Drywell's reported. Traffic reported. Power station reported. Power station ready for firing. Communications? Everything's just dandy, Skipper. Co-pilot? Instruments okay. Automatic pilot tracking. Give the warning signal.
We're falling. It's all right, Joe. We're weightless. Free orbit, that's all. Weightless? Free orbit? Just where are we? You mean this thing is waking? We're... we're... No, sir. Not me. Nobody ever told me this was practical. Turn this thing around you here. Take me back. I ain't going to no moon. That's just to look at. I'm sick. Grab hold. Now hang on. What happened to me? You're all right. Free orbit, everything is falling at the same speed. So anything unfastened just floats. There's no up or down. Hell up my stomach. It says there's nothing but up. Oh boy. Am I seasick? You're not seasick. You're space sick. I'm sick of that too. these pills. It'll settle your stomach. I can't swallow. It won't go down. It'll take a little practice without gravity to help. You'll manage. General, how are you feeling? We got another one of those pills. Here's a whole box full. Let's see if I can swallow better than Sweeney. I know one thing. Unless these pills work, space travel isn't going to be popular. on my stomach. Shoes, General. Thank you. Let's get these on you. They've got magnets in the soles. How do you feel now? Just the way I did when I tried my first smoke. You'll be all right in a minute. Put that one on and try to get the dry wells. Spaceship Luna calling dry wells. Spaceship Luna calling dry wells. Over. Dry wells to Spaceship Luna. Man alive, I can't believe it. Your takeoff checked out according to flight plan. We are now tracking you by radar. You are in your calculated orbit to the limit of the accuracy of our instruments. We'll continue to track you as long as we can. Good luck. Over. Thank you, dry wells and Roger. Doc, General, you've got to see this. I'd seen everything. Just look at those cities. At Los Angeles. Or San Francisco. Sure. 
That's Los Angeles. That's New York. Can you see Brooklyn? Sure, there's Brooklyn. I wonder who's pitching. Piloting radar. I tried to crank out the antenna. It seems to be stuck. Stuck? I don't understand it. I was particularly careful when I greased it. Greased it? No wonder it's stuck. It's exposed to outer space, frozen solid. You should know better than that, Sweeney. Why? I'm no scientist. It was covered in the engineering instructions, or didn't you bother to read them? All right, hold it, hold it, Doc. Arguing won't get us anywhere. That piloting radar has to be fixed. Try to land blind, it'd be our finish. How do they fix it, Doc? Somebody has to go outside and free it. Outside? You mean go outside the ship? It can't be done any other way. But we'd be swept off. No, you won't. You can't fall. Outside, you'll be in the same orbit, the same trajectory as the ship, moving right along with it. Worst could happen, you'd drift away from the side. We could avoid that by using safety lines. Well, let's be done. Let's do it. No, Jim, I'll go. I want to inspect the throat of the rocket jet anyway, see how it stood up under the takeoff. All right. I'll tag along. Me too. I follow this up, and if you guys go out, so do I. You coming, General? No. I'm not a bit curious. You boys go and have your fun. I'll stand right up the log. The green's just the color for you, Sweeney. Ready to put on the helmets? I won't be able to breathe in here. You won't be able to breathe without it. Hook up your air hose. Forget there's no air outside. There's plenty of room for it.
stuck up here. We ain't moving. It only seems that way. Matter of fact, we're traveling thousands of miles per hour. Here in space, all comparisons are lost. Take a look behind you. Wow! The geography books are right. How do you feel now, Joe? Weird. Thousands of miles an hour, and not a breeze. Ah, uh, it's more beautiful than I ever dreamed. You'll never be able to describe it to anyone.
almost didn't make it. Can we get back? If we don't, we'll throw the universe together. Hang on, I'm going to turn this... We're going backwards. We land backwards. And we'll jet in the direction of our fall and use the firing as brakes. Land by acceleration. is predicted. Good. Radar report. Altitude 108,000. Closing as predicted. Power. Flat okay. That didn't slow us. We're going faster than ever. No, we're not. It seems that way because we're close and heading in. Look, I just decided I don't want to go through with this thing. Let's go home. Put it out, Joe. Give me the view aft. View aft. Power aft. On manual. Ready now. Holy smoke! You can't land and that would be splattered! Quit worrying. We're landing in a smooth plane, short of there. I'm going to kill our forward speed. Stand by. Acceleration. You missed, Jim. I know it. Emergency! Jim, give us some lateral. Too late. Got to land her in the next few seconds of firing and won't have enough to get home. I'll have to use the drift we've got. You going to chance it, Jim? Got to. Doc, automatic landing. Automatic it is. Co-pilot. Tracking in on automatic. Right. Tracking now. Cover me at 830 oh feet. Cover at 830. Oh. Correction, cover at 870. Oh. 870, oh, right. Can you miss those peaks? Got a pair in your pocket. Correction, 860. Oh. 860. Oh. Tracking steady. All hands brace for crash! Yeah, 
hands are down. Cut out your gyros. Okay. Fine landing, Jim. That was a terrible landing, you know it. I mean, for a first one. I wasted reaction mass. We'll need to get back. If we get back. Worry about that later. We just got here. Here. On the moon. Jim. Doc. We're on the moon. And we're alive. Holy cow. General, the next time you tell me you can get to the moon, I'll believe you. You waited a long time for this, Doc. All my life. Sweeney. How about trying to raise Washington? You bet. Wait till I tell him. Voice for a spaceship Luna in the lead way out in front. Doc, Jim, you two go down and set foot on the surface. That's something I want to enter in my log. No, no. I think we should all go together. Nonsense. You two made this trip possible. Spaceship Luna calling NAA Washington. Come on then, Doc. Spaceship Luna. This is your moment. Calling NAA Washington. Let's get to our spacesuits. Over.
and the name of the United States of America. I take possession of this planet on behalf of and for the benefit of all mankind. Dr. Cargraves, Mr. Barnes. Yes? I'm in contact with Washington. There's terrific excitement on Oit. We're hooked up to all the networks. They just interviewed the general. They want to interview you and Mr. Barnes, Doc. I passed your walkie-talkie in on the transmitter. I've hooked up our receiver, too. You can have a two-way conversation with them. Okay. Go ahead, Oit. Hello. Hello on the moon. This is Clarence Erskine greeting you from the Earth. The people of the world congratulate you for your epoch-making achievement. Thank you. Thank you. I must explain to the listeners that the lag between my voice and those from the moon is due to the vastness of space. It takes three seconds, even at the speed of light, for radio waves to travel between the Earth and moon. Mr. Barnes, can you tell us where you landed? The astronomers at Palomar say they could see you if they knew where to point the big eye. We landed in the crater Harpolis, which is in the upper left-hand quadrant of the moon, as seen from North America. Is Dr. Cargraves hooked in? Yes. Can you give us your first impressions of the moon, Dr. Cargraves? Well, I'll try. The first impression is one of utter barrenness and desolation. And then the silence. As there is no air, the only sounds we hear come through our radios. The sky is black, velvet black, and pierced by the most intensely brilliant stars anyone ever dreamed of. Hanging over the mountains in the distance, I can see our own planet Earth, many times larger than the harvest moon. I see most of the Western Hemisphere, and I can also see it's about sunrise in San Francisco. It's afternoon here, and will be for a couple of more days. Now perhaps Jim Barnes can add something. As a matter of record, may I report the moment he set foot on the moon. Dr. Cargraves claimed possession in the name of the United States for the benefit of all mankind. This is great and wonderful news for the people of the Earth. Thank you. The naval station NAA at Washington will stand by 24 hours a day for further signals from you. Goodbye and good luck. Roger. Doc, I'll never get used to this. I'll say this must weigh five, six hundred pounds. On Earth it does. Gravity up here is about one-sixth as much. That means things weigh one-sixth as much. I know it, but I can't believe it. General, look. Whee! Brady, cut that out! What's the matter? I could do that back home, I'd be an acrobat. All right, Joe. We've got too much to do and too little time for any more clowning. Let's get on with the schedule. I'm supposed to help you with the astronomical photographs, Doc. I can't for a bit. I've got to contact Earth and get Hastings to give us revised figures for our trip back. Well, I'll just have to wait for you. Joe, you help him. I can handle the radio. Joe's going to help me with the mineralogical survey. You can get along without him. You've only got one Geiger counter. But don't lose sight of the ship. That's a standing rule for everybody. Okay, Skipper. I'll help you later, General. I'm for seeing what there is to see. I don't figure on staying here too long anyway. And do you know why? Yeah, no beer, no babes, no baseball. You got it. Well, Doc, I'll pack this little gadget. I'll join you after I talk to Hastings. <laughs> One thing I'd like uh, is a souvenir of the trip. How about taking a picture of me up here, say, alongside the camera? Sure, Joe. That's not too much to ask. Give me the little camera. Oh, 
Saucer. That's it. Hey, wait a minute. I have a better idea. Come over here. Now turn around. Now hold your arm up. Now bend your elbow as though you were holding a heavy weight. Now your hand. That's it. Hold it. Okay. That'll be something to show. What is it, Doc? You and the Earth. Holding it up like a modern atlas. Hey, that's something, Doc. There's only one thing. What's that? Nobody will know it's me in this diving suit. Hey, Doc! Joe! Over here! Behind you! Reaction mass. Point eight six seven two. What? Repeat that. Yes, point eight six seven two. I wasted power making a very bad landing. I'll have to compute it, but it looks bad. We have to get you back. Jettison every ounce. All your forward tanks are empty. Can you rip them out? Not without tearing the ship apart. She wasn't built for it. I'll call at the same time 24 hours from now. I'll give you the answers. Be able to tell me then how much you've been able to lighten ship, and I'll tell you if you can make it. I'll stand by 24 hours from now. Just get us back home, that's all I ask. Couch pad number four, serial number 706, schedule B. Number 706, schedule B, check. And the schedule itself. That's everything that you can get out? Three of the space suits will be dropped before we take off. We have to keep one so we can open the airlock to drop the others. Skipper, I'll dump the stuff. It'll take me 15 minutes to check an ad. Give me the answer as soon as I can. Here's the wash. Thirty-six hours. Thirty 
86 hours what? Take off time. It's then or a month from then. That means never. Spaceship Luna, Spaceship Luna. Spaceship Luna, Barnes speaking. Here's the total. You've taken out almost two tons. Before takeoff, you can drop all your oxygen except 70 hours supply to get back on. Before takeoff, you can drop your remaining food. You can hold yourselves to a pint of water each a day and turn the rest of your drinking water into the reaction tanks. Have you got it? Right. You'll have to get on another thousand pounds. Another thousand? Of what? Tell us that. We're stripped. Don't make me say this. You have to learn. You don't have to say it. We know. Or we don't get back. I'm standing by. You've got to work it out. Hey, sweetie. Is this thing bolted or welded? Bolt. Let's get to work. Give me a wrench. I'd have gone over Niagara Falls in a barrel or found some other decent way to die. All right, Joe. We're all of this together. It's as simple as that. One of us stays. Of course. 180. More than enough. No, General. No, listen to me. Now, look here. I'm the oldest. I've done my job. I'm skipper of this ship. That's got nothing to do with it. It's got that. everything to do with it. I give the orders on this ship. That was agreed. I'm giving the orders now. Jim, nobody gives orders. The devil, they don't. This is the order. Doctor's the engineer. He goes back to his work. The general pilots the ship when you reach the Earth's atmosphere. I can be spared on this trip. I can be spared back home. I have no family. My job gets on without me. Jim, listen to me. This is not a ship at sea, and it's not a plane, and we're not mutineers. This has been a joint undertaking. The three of us did it together from the beginning. And it's no one's duty more than the others to give his life. I've had my day, a great one. I've shown that this could be done. And 
It's enough to make me glad I lived and content to stay. It's very noble, Doc. But it's philosophy. Skip philosophy. I'm the one who stays. Why? Because I'm the oldest. You two can tell them back home what we've seen much better than I could. Tell them how we looked up and saw the Earth. Vulnerable, exposed forever. Never setting in this lunar sky. You know what you just proved, General? You're the one man that must go back. Jim, General, are we going to have this whole thing end in futility because we can't reach a simple decision? I've reached my decision. I'm standing by it. Skipper, look here. Stay out of this, Sweeney. Don't worry, you'll get back. Right now, it looks like nobody gets back. I was just going to say, if you brains can't make up your minds, why don't you do what kids do? Match for it. You know, draw lots. All right. Right. No. Jim, two against one. What do we use? Have anyone have some paper? No. Matches, some coins. Everything's overboard. You got buttons on your coveralls. Match them. Spaceship Luna. Spaceship Luna. Dry Wells calling Spaceship Luna. Spaceship Luna to Dry Wells. Listen. We're working it out. One of us will stay behind. We're going to draw lots. Only 110 pounds. There must be something more. Check time. 9.31.50, 18 minutes to zero hour. Check. We'll take off with three men. Hey, where's Joe? He's gone. What's wrong? You're not coming in. It won't open. It's cycling. He's not in there. Then he... No, oh, he can't do that. Spaceship Luna. Spaceship Luna. He's left the ship. We're here. Stand by. Something's happened. Swinney's left the ship. The helmet's gone. I can't see him. The angle's too great. Wait a moment, there he is, he's dragging something. Sweeney! Sweeney! Sweeney, can you hear me? <laughs> sure, I hear you. Come back, Joe, come back! And die in that steel death trap? You won't die, Joe, not you. You're going home! Not a chance. Goodbye, fellas. Remember me to the gals, any gals. Spaceship Luna, you're not coming in. Here, Doc, talk to him. Something's happened. Swinney's left the ship. Joe, you've got to come back. Are you taking off? I don't know, I don't know. Stand by. We've got to think of something. Joe, you've got to come back. We can't let you do this. What do you mean, let me? You can't stop me. I lightened your ship. I gave you a chance. Now get going. Don't make a monkey out of me. Come back, Joe. Come back. You've got to. We're all in this together. If you don't, we can't take off. You gotta. You gotta. Or you'll be killing me and for nothing. Crazy goon, it's not up to you. Nobody's asking you. You're killing yourself. Cut it short, will you take off? I want to see it. Joe! A ship going back from the moon to the earth. Joe, I just thought of something. I thought of a way. A way to what? To take off. All of us. We're all going back. Do you hear me? All of us. But hurry! What do you mean, all of us? You've got to do just as I tell you. I think we can make it. You wouldn't kid me. Don't be a fool. It's our lives, too. We, we, we've less than 15 minutes. What's the deal? Get back into the airlock as fast as you can. Bring a, a screwdriver, a knife, and a rat tail file, and a weight, a, an oxygen tank. Tie the tank to the end of your safety line. Uh, I'll tell you the rest when you're in the airlock. Is he coming? He's picking up the things. Yes, he's heading toward us. What's your plan, Captain? Just this. Sweeney's spacesuit weighs what? 70 pounds. The radios weigh all of 50. There's 110 pounds with a little margin. We can't open the door of the airlock without his spacesuit, so he won't open it when he gets his spacesuit off. But he can drill a small hole between the door and the casing, big enough for a safety line to get through. He ties the oxygen tank to the end of the safety line. It hangs outside. The line passes through the small hole. There's a slow leak, but Sweetie can take off his suit, tie it to the inside end of the line, and come up here. We decompress the airlock, the door opens, the suit is dragged out. General, watch for him. He must be in the airlock. It's cycling. He's in there, watching the indicator. Pressure's up. I can open it. Let me have a screwdriver. General, unscrew the radio. Sweeney, I want you to listen carefully. I want... Wait a minute. Hastings. Hastings, we're coming home, all of us. You won't hear from us again until you see us. I'm junking the radio. That's all. Goodbye. Rip her out, General. Listen carefully. I want you to put on the helmet. Go to the airlock, decompress it, open the outer door.
Stations. Sweetie, as soon as your strap's fast, television view aft. Strap's okay here. Power plant. All ready to go. No time for count off, stand by. Fire! 